Hey YouTube, time for a fish room update, November 2016. Stay tuned. Alright YouTube, it's Brian again coming at you with a fish room update for November of 2016. And uh, we're going to start out up here with uh, Cheeto's tank. This is in my office. As you can see, he's still doing well, um, full of energy, full of personality. Um, it's really cool having him up in my office. Uh, get to check him out every day. I just, as I'm sitting at my desk, I just turn right a little bit, and there he is. Um, just an awesome, awesome fish. Um, couldn't be happier with this guy. I'm thinking about trying to find him a female. So if anyone knows um, or has. Um, uh, true Midas, Amphilophus citronellus, that you can uh, prove that it is a true Midas and, and show me the lineage. Doesn't need to be wild, doesn't need to even be F1, uh, doesn't really matter, um, but uh, I'd like to uh, find something for him to see how he works out with a female. The loaches are doing well in this tank too, they're all kind of congregating over in this corner right now. Haven't fed them yet today, so uh, they're kind of waiting for some food. Um, <clears throat> but I'll zoom out here on the tank a little bit. It's a 125 gallon. And yeah, um, everything's going well so far since I moved him up here, so. That is the big boy. All right. Um, Behind my desk is the 90 gallon uh, shrimp only tank now, taking all the fish out of it. This is a Uwagumi aquascape that I did. Um, Monte Carlo is the carpeting plant and Oiko stones, I believe that's how they're pronounced, are the hardscape. And I've got, uh, oh, about 300. Um, cherry shrimp in here and most of these are pretty nice grade um, you could call them painted fire reds PFRs as they say try to zoom in on some of the nicer looking ones but yeah this tanks doing good I'm still fighting a little bit of an algae issue in here um, but overall things are doing pretty good to zoom sometimes with this aquascape. But yeah, just to kind of give you an overall look at it. Um, that's what we're working with. Shrimp everywhere. A lot of them are hiding out too. A lot of nooks and crannies in here for them to hide. Still dealing with this weird stringy, I called it in my last video, an algae. Um, I had kind of been thinking it might be Rickia, but I, I didn't see how it could be. But a few people pointed out in my last video that it is Rickia, flu, Rickia flutens. So I know in the past I've dealt with, I'll never, that's a plant that I would never um, recommend getting unless you want to live with it for the rest of your life. It just seems to follow follow things everywhere like I I had one batch of it in a tank a couple years ago and I'm still fighting it in this tank and the only thing I can figure is that it must have somehow a little bit of it must have attached to these stones because what had happened was part of that rickia was in this tank at one point before I created this scape I had some of these stones in this tank and in another type of escape and somehow it must have gotten onto these stones one of these stones and it, it just won't go away once you get it um, it's one of those plants that uh, to me is a nuisance nuisance plant don't get me wrong when you have a nice pad of it it looks cool but it's just it's just messing up this aquascape in my opinion so 
but anyway, I spent enough time on this tank, so we'll take you out here to take a look at the uh, discus tank, and then we'll head downstairs. Kind of a dark, gloomy day here in Minnesota, getting a lot of rain, so I'm just keeping all the lights off to get better uh, lighting in the tanks, I guess you'd say. Discus are all doing well. Getting a little bit of a... Oh, I don't. I always forget what kind of algae this is. Blackbeard, maybe? No, it's different than Blackbeard. It's kind of like puffy, like little puff balls. I've had it before in here, and I removed it myself. Worked on the water parameters a little, get the phosphate levels down, and everything turns out okay. So, just need to find some time to put the work in uh, to do that. But uh, we'll get it looking better again. Um, I moved the Cardinal Tetras from that 90 gallon that we were just showing into this tank. And um, I'm going to just kind of wait and see how they do. In the past, I've had bigger discus like this guy eat Cardinals. Um, so I went to these Serpes for this tank. I like the Serpes, but man, a Cardinal Tetra in with discus for some reason. I know it's overdone and it's uh, everyone does it, but it just looks so cool. And it honestly looks even cooler when you're sitting far, like across the room. So I'm hoping that these survive, and if so, I'm going to add more and remove the Serpes. Just personal preference, um, but uh, that's what I'll probably end up doing. So yeah, that's the discus tank. We'll go downstairs and take a look. Um, depending on when this airs, uh, I'll have a separate reef update, either before or after this video, and then uh, also a separate shrimp video this month, so keep your eyes out for those. Here's Colossus. Um, this is the uh, the uh, King Confa 9.9. .9. He's doing good. He's he's kind of gone through a little bit of a growth spurt lately. Um, really happy with this fish. He's just kind of living out his days alone in here. Um, kind of a cool little wet pet. I'm really happy with him. He's hungry, he wants to eat. He's more concerned with going up to the top where he thinks the food is. I'll give him a little bit of food here. Um, here's some Southern Delight. This is large cichlid. This is actually what I feed the Midas below. I've been feeding him power feed, but since the can or the bottle's right here, I'll just give him a little bit. He'll eat it, I'm sure. Yep, loves the stuff. Can't go wrong with Southern Delight. Down below is the Midas pear. Still doing good. <laughs> this guy's got about as much personality as his brother upstairs. Really dig this female here. Still not 100% convinced that she's a true Midas, but man, these colors on her, the white with the orange highlights is just so cool. They haven't shown any, any uh, signs that they're interested in spawning, which is fine. I mean, if they did, that'd be cool, but don't really have the room for growing these out right now. Give them a little bit of food, too. These are Southern Delight large cichlid. Same thing before, but I fed the flower horns, so. He likes to kind of spit it out sometimes and then re-eat it. Not sure what that's all about, but anyway. Let's have a look at him from up above, maybe. See if we can't. Uh... Just an awesome fish, man. Wouldn't be happy with that guy either. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Behind me here are what I have left of the um, Redis latest grow outs. I kept six for myself. The rest have all been sold and shipped off. So I'm going to grow these out for a little while and then decide if I want to try to get a pair out of them or just sell these off as bigger fish. But for right now, this is uh, this is what I've got. 
I feed these guys a Southern Delight small cichlid. Just put a little bit in here, see if we can watch them eat. They're a little skittish right now. Let's see if they come out and start tackling the food. This is kind of the big dog of the tank. This guy right here. Pleco there too. All right. Um, so down below here now, I've got two Hadiensis, and as you can see, they're divided. Um, this female got beat up pretty bad by another female, but she's gonna make it. Just kind of nursing her back. She's got some body damage there, but uh, overall she's fine. This is a male that once she's healed up, I'm going to try to pair off with her. So, we'll see what happens. My other flower horn. This is a uh, red magma. Really enjoying this guy too. I'm working on, uh, I know I mentioned at the end of my last video, but I'm working on. Um, I got an air system set up, so I've got sponge filters in all the tanks, and I'm just going to be slowly removing my canisters and or uh, hang on back filters. So um, the, these guys, these uh, sponges are about seeded now, so we should be ready to go soon. There's some shrimp tanks, but I'll do that separately in a separate video. So down here now, what I've got is um, these are the sequia that I had in with my Redis latest and then also the sequia grow outs that I had in those small grow out tanks across the room. So um, I'm really digging these lately. Um, you know I had kind of just kept them for the most part for dithers and then as they started breeding and you really look at them they're just a really cool looking fish. The light here isn't doing them justice but when they're in breeding dress especially these males they look so cool. The other cool thing about them is you know, these males that you're seeing in here are, are full grown, you know, at, what, four or five inches. But they're just a, well, I think they're full grown. They may grow a little bit more. But it's so cool. They have nuchal humps on them, and they just look like a miniature size of some big beast cichlid, like a Hoga or a Islatus or something like that along those lines. So it's really cool. I kind of like it. So I've just kind of put these all together kind of let them be a, a little breeding colony on their own. Before I had them with the Islatus, that's what they were too. They weren't quite as, as big and they were breeding all the time together. So um, I've set up some tubes and some pots and you know, it's just kind of a fun little tank, something a little bit different uh, for me. This guy right here is my favorite one. He kind of rules the tank. But um, when he's in breeding dress, boy, cool looking colors. Alright, then we've got the umbies, which by the way, these umbies are, I've got them listed for sale right now on Fish Keepers Classifieds. If you're interested in an umbie pair, let me know. My email is in the description below. Whoa! But this is an F1 Real Magdalena. Umbi from Magnus and Beast, which if you know anything about Umbies, you know who Magnus and Beast are. And then this is a wild caught female that I got, uh, I believe it was from Jeff Rapps a year or so ago. He's about 12 plus inches and she's uh, 8 or 9. Up above here I got a new tank, 180 gallon, for the um, Modas. Get them on camera without that glare here. They're doing well. They're getting accustomed to their new home. They're a little skittish for a few days when I'm when I um, changed them out, but 
They're doing great. They did, they tried to spawn a few days prior to me um, switching their tanks. And um, it was really weird. She didn't lay very many eggs. And a lot of them didn't, a lot of the, well, I shouldn't say a lot because there weren't a lot, but most of the eggs that she laid didn't stick to the pot and kind of rolled down to the bottom. I've had that happen with my Redis latest pair before too. So um, it was just kind of weird and her tube looked really funny during the process and there was, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it didn't go real well. But at any rate, we'll just keep, uh, keep hanging on with these guys. I really love them and uh, they're just a great looking fish and we'll just kind of wait and see what continues to happen as far as spawning goes. Not a huge priority for me with this pair, but uh, it's also kind of fun to see your fish spawn. So He likes digging. As you can see, he's moved a bunch of gravel <laughs> um, from the ground up on top of that uh, sponge filter that wasn't placed there by me or anything. So. But her coloration is really good. You can see he's been nipping at her a little bit. Uh, he's probably ready to spawn again. Um, but she always heals from that. I'm not worried about it at all. So, uh, Moving next door, here's the Redis latest pair. Um, they also spawned since my last video. Um, but... Um, they, the, most of the eggs um, just kind of rolled to the bottom of the pot. And um, they made it to Wigglers and they must have ate them because they were just all of a sudden gone. But they're showing behavior again in the last few days like they may want to give it another shot, which for this pair is pretty rare when they, in the, you know, they've only spawned a few times since I've had them. Um, and it's usually, you know, months in between. So maybe they're going to get, start getting on more of a regular deal. I don't know. Not keeping my fingers crossed though. But regardless, this this guy is just so awesome and she's she's not bad either. But uh, this, this, is la this latest here is just phenomenal. Below is uh, another couple of Hadiensis. They're super shy. This is a male in this tube. I can't tell if the female's in there with them or where she's hiding right now, but they do come out from time to time and they have shown some behavior that they're digging each other. As you can see, they've been doing some digging and they've been doing some other things that I've witnessed, but um, not much to show here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. And then up here is my final Hadiensis uh, tank. This is um, actually the best male I've got. Um, he's going to be getting a new tank here fairly soon in the near future. There's some new tanks coming to the fish room. Um, and then he's going to go in a tank that another current fish is in right now. We won't get into that until it's a done deal and the tanks are here. But scratched up tank right here. Sorry about that. Uh, the female a lot of times is in this tube. I can't tell if she is. I'm not tall enough to see him just holding the camera up. But they get along real well. Um, I would have thought that they would have spawned by now because they've been showing spawning behavior for a long time. They spawned all the time with their previous owner, uh, Mike. And uh, so I know they're just probably getting ready, um, getting used to their surroundings and everything, but I've had them now for a handful of weeks, so it should happen soon. Um, just some grow out tanks here with not much going on other than a few plecos and this tank's got some red devils. Then down below here is um, my one red devil pair that I kept. Kind of my keeper pair, nice orange ones. They spawn super regularly. You can see there's a bunch of eggs in here again. You saw that video I posted recently of the huge cloud of fry. Um, so they're at it again and they'll be producing hundreds if not over a thousand uh, fry in the very new future, very near future. They laid those eggs two days ago, so they should be hatching today or tomorrow, I think. But anyway, that is it for the fish tanks. As I said before, I'll do a separate um, video on the shrimp tanks and the reef tank. But I'll leave you with a shot of Colossus here. 
and uh, like I always say you know if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe I try to keep regular updates on my fish room post other videos from time to time regarding uh, different fish that I keep or shrimp or any other aquatic animal um, make sure you go down below and subscribe to all the members of Team Aquatic Support. Uh, they have YouTube channels and they'll be listed below. And then make sure you go over to Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook, give that a like, and go to Aquatic Support Community on Facebook and give that a like too. But until next time, take care guys.